During the great lockdown of 2020, the biggest debate wasn't about social distancing, but whether animal rights activist Carol Baskin really killed her first husband, Don Lewis. Did he vanish into thin air? Or did she turn him into pet food? This perplexing mystery is only one of the crazy chapters from Tiger King, the Netflix series that captivated the world. At the center of it is Joe Exotic, the outrageous zoo owner who got into the ultimate cat fight with Carol Baskin. Their feud would end with an alleged murder for hire plot and him going to prison. In this episode, we're going back to the jungle to find out what really happened. Oh, and did I mention you'll hear from the Tiger King himself? Yup. Joe Exotic gave us an exclusive interview you do not want to miss. This call is from a federal prison. What's up? Today on Death in Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. Two counts of murder. Injury and death. Oh my God. Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. Ah! What do you call this thing anyway? Death in entertainment. Greetings, Deto Universe. Hey there. Oh, listen to us. The H's are hard for me right now. H. Hey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very tough. We do not have COVID, but we have been getting our asses kicked by the whooping cough. That's not confirmed, though. It's confirmed for me. You think? In my head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I've narrowed it down to whooping cough or a bronchial infection Mm -hmm. or tuberculosis. Oh, a little TB. (laughs) And I'm kind of jealous of tuberculosis at this moment (laughs) if I have whooping cough. Yeah. Because whooping cough is terrible. Whoop, there it is. Yeah, it's the worst of the whoopies. Yeah. There's Whoopi Goldberg. There's the whoopee cushion. There is. And then the whooping cough. Yeah. Uh, You have got the worst of it. Yeah, it's been over a month of not even this. This is good. Like, I feel great right now, even though I sound like I'm dead. You sound like Harvey Firestein. It's what he'll sound like when he's dead. (laughs) Do you you have these uh, Harvey Fires? Can you say, honey, I'm so happy? Honey, I'm so happy. The Harvey is here. (laughs) This is amazing. (laughs) Be more careful with this one. He says that to Robin Williams when he has to make him a new mask, of course, and Mrs. (laughs) Doubtfire. Be more careful with this one. It's uncanny. I'm going to take it on the road. You should. (laughs) I think I also sound like Tom Waits after he smokes heroin. Ooh. (laughs) That's very nice. Uh, But we're here. This is very exciting. It is very exciting. God, I've been daydreaming about death and entertainment for so long, and And we've never left it dormant this long. No, it's been nearly a month getting our freaking asses kicked by this. And honestly, for me, it was always rain or shine. Yeah, it's been very sad not to uh, be able to sit here with you and do some podcasting. Yes. So yeah, if anybody's new to this podcast, which I'm sure a lot of people will be because we do have an exclusive interview with Joe Exotic later in this episode. But if you don't know what we're about, we are a true crime comedy podcast. So if that's not your thing, why don't you go check another zoo? Why don't you go check into urgent care? Yeah, you probably should. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, we're going into it. All right, Joseph Allen Maldonado. That's a mouthful. I don't think those were his birth names, though, because Maldonado was Travis, his future. Oh, that's man. right. Yeah, Joseph Allen Shreve Vogel. Wow. Shreve Vogel. That's even more of a mouthful. Yeah. Jesus. He was born in Garden City, Kansas, March 5th, 1963. And this guy has had quite the life. Eventually grew up, uh, he jumped over to Texas with his family. I kind of like Shreve Vogel. Shreve Vogel. Sounds like a music act. Simon and Shreve Vogel. (laughs) (laughs) Joseph Allen and the Shreve Vogels. I haven't lost it, Kyle. You haven't. I still have that quick wit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. 
Yeah, this guy's life got put into the zeitgeist. Yes. If you can remember a time when we all sounded like Alejandro does right now, and we were all coughing and had to stay in. The Tiger King was a show that just took the world by storm. The moment I accepted that we were in a quarantine, I sat down on my couch. This was the first thing that pops up. Yeah, it was so good. You just couldn't believe that these people were real. <laughs> It was a world that you didn't know existed. Yeah, the world of uh, highly sought after big cats and endangered species. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's nuts. Um, Joe had like a crazy life before all this even started. He was a police officer in Texas, just lived a, a long life before 1999 when he starts the GW Zoo. And he was married to a woman originally. Yeah. One of his siblings outed him as gay while he was a police officer. I believe he was like 19 years old. And it's claimed that he had attempted suicide by driving his cop car as fast as he could into a bridge. Oof. Very crazy. Yeah, that's sad. So he had to leave the force after that. Yeah, you don't want your cops trying to kill themselves <laughs> with their vehicles. You want them to kill other people. <laughs> um, he opened a pet store in Texas with his brother, Gerald. And his first husband, Brian Ryan, in 1986. And that's where he found his love for the exotic. <laughs> yeah, in the Peacock series, he would go around with a baby tiger on a leash. Yeah. And hit on guys. Oh, my God. Like, hey, you want to pet my baby tiger? <laughs> and that's how he supposedly met this bartender who became his first husband. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and they ended up selling the store after his brother, Gerald, died. Or is it Gerald? I would usually bet on Gerald. Gerald. After Gerald's death in 1997, uh, he was just like, I'm going all in on this crazy big cat stuff. And that's when he purchased a small farm in Oklahoma and turned it into the Gerald Wayne Exotic Animal Memorial Park. Okay, so that's where GW comes from. Yes. Named after his brother. That's where it started, and then they changed the name to Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Park. So that was another GW. Right. He got tigers in 2000. And then he just, you know, ramped up from there, got gorillas, alligators, a whole bunch of stuff. And everything seemed to be going fine. You know, he was just like this character that had his own zoo, you know, not paying much attention to anybody else. But then that bitch, Carol Baskin, shows up. <laughs> that bitch down in Florida. <laughs> Yeah, she really got under his skin. And in our conversation, which people will listen to, he kind of made it seem like it was like professional wrestling, where the feud was kind of to make them both money. Like he would get his supporters from being like, oh, we need to take that bitch down and make sure you're taken care of. And then she had her supporters who were like, oh, my God, he's the worst. We need to make sure we give you money to get these tigers away from his farm, whatever. But he never thought that would happen. So they both profited from this. Yes. But what was she really trying to do with him? She was trying to get his park shut down. Uh, she said it was like cruel conditions for the animals and everything like that. And she wanted to essentially take his farm over or zoo over. See, that goes a little beyond wrestling then. Yeah. Because she was serious. Right. And then that's what we're going to debate today, of course, as well. Was Joe serious? What he said about her. Yeah, exactly. Um, he was taking his cats and going to places like shopping malls and other, you know, public events and bringing tigers with them so people could pet the baby tigers and learn about them. And Carol Baskin did not like that. Mm. She really wanted to stop the private ownership of big cats, even though she has a ton of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never understood that. Well, she just, it seems like she's very politically motivated in a way that makes sure she comes out on top at all times. Right. Because essentially she had an animal park like Joe Exotic had. Yeah. Except she calls it a rescue. Yeah. A sanctuary. Exactly. So even though it's sort of the same thing, oh, but these are cats we rescued from the bad people. Right. But we're still going to keep them in cages here. Yeah. So speaking of professional wrestling, uh, we have promos that Joe would make <laughs> about Carol. Carol Baskin. Yep, that lady that profits over $1.5 million sucking on your heartstrings about shit on the internet that ain't even true. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe Exotic, and we're going to make an honest woman out of this bitch. We're still going to dig up Carol's ass. Before I'm done with this, I'm going to have the bitch's head in a jar. Here's Carol's birthday next month. 
and we're shipping her two of these. <laughs> Look at the things Snakes. on that. Happy birthday, Carol. Is Don really under the septic tank? She ain't going nowhere. Before you bring me down, it is my belief that you will stop breathing. So that shot you heard was him shooting a Carol Baskin blow up doll. Doll in the head. <laughs> so he is, you know, a lot of people could say he was serious. It seems very theatrical. V extremely over the top. But I mean, if that's you, would you feel comfortable with that <laughs> happening? <laughs> Me? Yeah. No. Carol, we don't know. She was probably actually scared for a little bit. They are strong words. And bullets. But also, if you were really going to go through with a murder for hire plot against her, yeah. would you put all that out there? Would you have been so obvious about it? Mm, that's true, too. Yeah, so he, he really went after her, as you heard. And he was obsessed with the fact that her first husband went missing and she inherited everything. And it turned her into an instant millionaire. And then that's when she became holier than thou and going after people. So he didn't like that too much. She wasn't even a Nepo baby. No. She was like a Nepo widow. Yeah, absolutely. So she was married to this man, Don Lewis, back when she was Carol Murdoch. Ooh, a Murdoch. Murdoch. Murdoch's on the case. She said she fled being attacked by her abusive first husband, Michael Murdoch, which now, who knows? She's always a victim. She is. We don't know. Also something to think about. You said she was probably a little scared, but did she enjoy being comfortably in that victim place again? Ooh. I, okay. I like that. Okay. So she escapes this abusive marriage. Yeah. And started having an affair with Don Lewis. While they were still married. Ooh. Bum, bum, bum. And she became one of his many girlfriends and helped him grow his wealth by selling real estate in 1984. So she helped him build his fortune. She says. Oh, this is all her word. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> of course. Uh, they divorced each other's spouses and married each other in 1991. So they were together for a long time. Yeah. Before they got married. They would often argue about how to run their little pet sanctuary. Um, he wanted to breed the cats and operate it as a business while she wanted it to be a nonprofit charity. But a nonprofit charity also can make money. Oh, yeah. So that's one of the perks of having a nonprofit charity. There's so many instances where the head of the nonprofit is pocketing all this money yeah. secretly. Oh, yeah. I think Kim Kardashian took 90% of her no. charities yeah but you're allowed to i know but it's ugh. yeah it's gross how much money do you need is the real question according to murdoch who remarried in 2004 and took the name baskin so we're talking about carol here she said that don lewis was obsessed with sex and would frequently fly to costa rica to engage in affairs especially when she was menstruating isn't that nice yeah <laughs> According to people in the family, they said Don would just take off to Costa Rica without telling anyone. And he would always call someone when he arrived so people would know here where he was. He told family members and friends that he was planning to eventually move to Costa Rica permanently. In early 1997, Lewis began transferring ownership of his properties in Florida to a Costa Rican company he controlled. In the days leading up to his disappearance, he had bought a plane ticket to Costa Rica and was loading equipment onto a truck he planned to drive to Miami. Carol comes out and says that his mental health has just gone to shit. And he began rummaging in dumpsters and hoarding vehicles and junk. And she said he was losing his short-term memory, sometimes was disoriented, and she suspected he was developing Alzheimer's. Hmm. Which, that's how you pronounce it, Alzheimer's. I hate when people say Alzheimer's. Do people say that? Yeah, it drives me fucking nuts. Alt? Alzheimer's, like you're an old person. Oh, really? I've never heard. Or old-timers. I've never heard that. Oh, God. I, I'm jealous. People in Massachusetts say it all the time, and I just want to punch them in the face. Jesus. Anyway. Well, maybe they're mentally deficient. Maybe they're, they got Alzheimer's. <laughs> uh, however, Lewis's former personal attorney and former business associate, uh, they disputed this mental health characterization. And he had kids from a previous marriage that disputed yes. it as well. Yeah, three, I believe. 
and they all want to know where he is. In July 1997, Lewis filed for a restraining order against Baskin, claiming she had threatened to kill him and had hidden his gun to prevent him from uh, prevent him from protecting himself. Wow. Baskin said that he filed the request because she would haul away some of his junk whenever he visited Costa Rica. Lewis continued to live with her afterwards, despite having sought the restraining order. Lewis told her multiple times that he wanted a divorce, but she says she thought he was not being serious. If I can't have you, no one can. <laughs> if I can't have you, uh, please, anyone, take her, please. Take my wife. Oh, she, that was Carol oh, saying yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds very fishy that he had a restraining order on her mm -hmm. and she would take his guns. Yeah. Lewis disappeared August 18th, 1997 after leaving his home and making an early morning delivery around 6 a.m. <laughs> a delivery of what? <sighs> Who knows? August 20th, his white 1989 Dodge Ram was found at the Pilot Country Airport in Spring Hill, Florida, 40 miles away from the sanctuary. At the time of the disappearance, Lewis owned several planes and was known to sometimes fly them, even though his private pilot license was suspended. Well, so not everything's on the up and up here yeah, with Don. You can't let that stop you. No. Sometimes you just got to go bang whores in Costa Rica. <laughs> And what is that thing that Carol said that she ran into him the night that he was leaving? He kept telling her, oh, I got to go to Costa Rica very early. Yeah. It's just too convenient that he would leave her in the darkness about what he's up to, but still tell her like, oh, but I'm taking off early. Right. The airport manager said the van had not been moved for a few days and the sheriff's deputies found its keys in the floorboard, but no other evidence inside. They're claiming that there was no sign of foul play. But this is also crazy because who is the sheriff's deputy in Florida? Carol Baskin's brother. Wow. And he denies picking her up at, you know, six in the morning and taking her back home. That's what she says happened. No. Oh. That's what other people have said happened because uh, I believe oh, she I ran see. into a friend. Yeah, yeah. And was like, oh, Carol. And then she gets taken home by her brother, who's a cop. And then the cops say, oh, there's no foul play. He's fine. God We're all going to be rich. Yeah. Even police went to Costa Rica and investigated there. Their investigation lasted five days and found, I guess they did find indications that Lewis had engaged in extramarital affairs and questionable uh, business practices. Did he have like an apartment there? Uh, probably. And he would just go there to try to get something going. Yeah, he definitely had a place to stay. Yeah. A bunch of money. Your money goes so far. People are saying you can live off of like $5,000 for the year in Costa yeah. Rica. He would enjoy going there. And this time he kind of went there, we're told, for mysterious reasons. Yeah. Could have been business. Mm -hmm. His assets were estimated to be about $5 million, leading to a very disgusting legal dispute between Baskin and her, uh, Lewis's children. And this is like where some of the inconsistencies and falsehoods come up against Joe, because I got into an argument with a friend of mine who was saying that, oh, yeah, no, Carol said that uh, Don was found in 2002 by the Department of Homeland Security. Like, it's, he's totally fine. And it's like, don't you think that would be bigger news? Who would believe that? A lot of people apparently believe it because there were other people agreeing with this person. I was what? like, what is wrong with you people? This is not true, man. But. That's another thing during uh, Tiger King season two. Apparently, there was a falsified document that Carol tried to pass off as real. And they had to fudge the date on it because the Department of Homeland Security didn't exist until after 9-11. And they originally said that he was found by Department of Homeland Security before 9-11. And then we're like, oh, no, it was 2002. Uh, and then he was declared dead in 2002. We have a clip of her saying this on an ITV morning show yeah. in 2021. I tell you what, one of the really exciting things that came out of Tiger King 2 is that they produced a letter from Homeland Security, and it says that a special agent in charge with the FBI at Homeland Security reached out to sheriff, or the uh, sheriff's detective, George Fernandez, which means this had to have happened after 2002 because Homeland Security wasn't even around until 2002. Oh, that's what and they found said out. that my husband, Don Lewis, is alive and well in Costa Rica. Well, and yet all of this hay has been made about me having something to do with his disappearance when Homeland Security has known where he is. Do you believe that, Carol? Do you think that he's still alive? I didn't think that he was capable of supporting himself. He took about a million dollars down into Costa Rica, and I had agreed to let him do that so he could prove to himself that he couldn't make a living. And when we recovered what we could out of that years later, 
it was only about $80,000 because the investments he had made were so bad. So I don't know how it is that Homeland Security says he's alive and well in Costa Rica, but I'm glad to hear it. Oh, yeah, oh, my I bet you are. If you thought for a second your first husband was alive, you wouldn't go try to find him and talk to him? You'd want to catch up. Like, hey, look what I've been up to. Yeah, look what I did with your fucking all your money. Did you see me on Dancing with the Stars? Yeah, it was pretty good, huh? It's so ludicrous. Yeah. I guess she's never heard the phrase, never speak ill of the dead. Mm. She makes him sound like such a loser. Yeah, exactly. And you can tell someone's guilty when they can't stop trashing the dead person. That's a big sign. Yeah. Watch any interview with OJ after the trial. Yeah. He would be like, Nicole would go run around with those yeah, she was sleeping drug with dealers. Yeah, yeah, she was sleeping with all these <laughs> bad people, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, Don is missing, has been missing this whole time. She profited majorly off of his disappearance, possibly had a sheriff's deputy brother kind of help her cover everything up. That's another thing. In an interview, she claims, I didn't even really know my brother well. Yeah, okay. Because we had a big age difference, so we never <laughs> really connected. That's also planted in your head, like, why would they ever work together on yeah, this? exactly. So when she starts attacking Joe, Joe finds this out. He finds documents. I think Joe gets a hold of Don Lewis's will. And at the very top, it says, in case of my disappearance, my assets go to. But you would never say in case of my disappearance, you'd say like upon my death. Yeah. So the fact that it said disappearance, it was very telling that she wasn't really she was in such a rush to get this done and put that together. So in my opinion, it was forged, possibly. Yes, I very much believe that it is weird wording. In case of my disappearance. Why is she so guilty sounding? Like in that interview we just heard. Yeah. Sound like you're kind of bothered by this whole thing. Right. Wouldn't you be disturbed that your husband went missing and is possibly dead all these years? Yeah. That would be like a traumatic experience. Right. But Carol, she never shows one ounce of sadness. And Joe claims that she fed him to the tigers or put him in a meat grinder, fed him to the tigers, and the rest of him was put not in but under a septic tank that was installed into the farm or the zoo. And then there was a tiger cage built on top of it. So you can't get to it at all. Well, she says that if you saw her meat grinder, you could hardly get his hand through it. Yeah. <laughs> much less the whole body. <laughs> and then she laughed just like you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Which shows again how traumatic this all is for her. Yeah, she's very torn up about the whole thing. So what do you think? Do you think that she turned him into ground beef? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, it's pretty clear that he was afraid of her and thought she might do something, but also didn't take many steps to protect himself. I think it would be easy for her to get someone else to, you know, beat him up. He was, he was not a big guy. He was an older dude. Seems like he could be taken down pretty easily. Yeah. And then, yeah, you have the, you know, the animals eat the evidence. Very convenient to yeah. have them there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like Robert Durst. Yeah. Remember, he looked so guilty. And he was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so does Kara. I don't know. There's, there's going to be more trials to come, I believe. She has to be deposed about a number of things. So they're planning on asking her more about Don Lewis. But... If she's been able to lie this long, I don't think she'll have any problem lying under her own. Oh, of course not. She's a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> she has gotten so famous from this. She was, like you said, on Dancing with the Stars. Dressed as a lion. Yes. Something with the Lion King, I believe. Something, yeah. It's so lame. Big cat. And she... Oh, and she got on Cameo and has already made like well over a million dollars. Shut she's on Cameo. You can get a Carol Baskin Cameo for your friends for about 250 or 300 bucks. I assume it all goes to the Big Cat Sanctuary. Yeah, it goes to the charity, which then goes to her. So that was his first big feud was with Carol Baskin. And then he meets another knucklehead named Jeff Lowe. Oof. And Jeff was like a friend of his that said he wanted to come work for Joe. Low is such a good name for this guy. This guy's low. So this essentially was a fatal move in Joe's plan. He was getting crushed by the Baskin lawsuits financially. So he right, wanted because at one point he even had to fork over a million dollars yeah. to earn a judgment. Yep. And he didn't have it. Right. 
So he's freaking out. He's like, I got to protect my stuff at all costs. So he's like, Jeff, my buddy, why don't I put the zoo in your name so it can be protected and not taken away from me? And this guy, ooh, was he happy about that news? He immediately was like, hell yeah. And Jeff Lowe moved to Oklahoma with his wife, and they began running the zoo and like smoking meth every day. And having a lot of sex. They claim. And yeah. orgies. Oh, God. Oklahoma orgies? Yeesh. And it's not like that was anything new, probably, at the GW Zoo. No. We all know what Joe Exotic was up to. <laughs> Yeah, he believed Lowe, who, you know, had a good business in Las Vegas and always bragged about his wealth. He, he just assumed he was a wealthy businessman, but he was actually a convic convicted criminal that had pleaded guilty to federal mail fraud after he posed as an employee of a charity for domestic abuse victims to obtain $1 million worth of merchandise that he later resold. You act like that's a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> He's resourceful. He's bad, very much so. So the zoo was now officially Jeff Lowe's and Joe Exotic was he was the face of the whole operation, but he was out at that point. He was yeah. never getting it back. And this is really the moment everything falls apart for him. Yeah, because he was actually filming. This is another misconception. Joe never filmed Tiger King. He was not a part of the production. That was actually only because Eric Good was able to get the all director. Yes. Was able to get all of his external hard drives and computers and cameras and all the stuff that they filmed not with them. And they just created this whole narrative around Joe Exotic and created um it's pretty much they just made a found footage thing. Like they they got this footage and then just rumple stilt skinned it all together. Yeah. Because Joe did have visions of becoming a media star. Oh, absolutely. He calls his YouTube channel Joe Exotic TV. Yeah. And that has been going on for years, way before Tiger King premiered. Right. But yeah, like you said, Eric Good talks to his then current husband, yeah. Dylan Passage. And buys all the footage for $2.6 million, not a dime of which Joe Exotic has seen. It's insane. He got it. Um, spousal privilege, I guess, goes a long way in terms of you don't have to testify against your husband or wife in the court of law. Spousal privilege. But you can also apparently just sign for someone else to hand over all their shit. Yeah. Which is insane. He was like in jail on trial for stuff. And that's when Dylan was like, hey, I'll sign everything over for $2.6 million. We're still together. Oh, I got the 2.6 check cleared. Now I'm going to divorce you. Dylan got that money. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. And he didn't put anything away for Joe. No. Oh. oh my God. No, he as soon as the check cleared, he divorced Joe. Shrewd, some might say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Joe was thinking with his dick. Come on. Why did he have to marry that guy? Oh, I mean, what are you gonna do? He's... He finds a little twink and he's hey, <laughs> you wanna be my husband? You know, and Joe, that guy's in control. Joe likes to be in a relationship, okay? Uh, yeah, come on, though. Look what good that did him this time. Yeah. Holy crap. I mean, Dylan really fucked him. Yeah. And then he screwed him over with the tapes. Hello! Still got it, people. Yeah, I sound like I'm dead, <laughs> but I'm here. <laughs> Yeah, so the biggest thing is that he just surrounded himself with all these menaces. Yeah, the characters, as we talked about, unbelievable. You don't even believe that they're real when right. you first see it. Yeah. Like that, can you clear this up for me? I forget. He was married before this Dylan guy. The first guy, I believe, died of HIV complications. Uh, the first husband. Mm -hmm. And then married this young guy named Travis Maldonado. And then another guy, John Finlay, like at the same time in the same wedding ceremony. Yeah. So what was binding from all that? Like, what was, was it legal? I think so. Huh. I mean... <laughs> We don't know, you know, what's been legal and not legal this whole time. I think that's the biggest part about this. And then another fascinating part is they weren't really gay, his two husbands. Oh, pansexual. Okay, I'll go with that's that. That's what they call it now. It's not bisexual. No, but this, this, this is, is all... more than two genders. This is all stuff they said in the documentary. Thank you very much. The interviewees, the subjects, said that they weren't gay. Yes. I'm not saying that because, frankly, when you see two men dressed up in a pink suit making out with another guy and they're getting married to each other, that looks pretty gay to me. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, that's actually the start of me and Joe Exotic's uh, talks together. Because during the pandemic, when Tiger King came out, me and a buddy of mine at the time made a sketch called Talking Tigers. And it was like a public access TV show based in the Tiger King world. Like, just give us a call. We're talking tigers. Just make sure, you know, when you're you're asking us questions, we want to answer them. But just make sure that the question's about tigers. Stay on subject. Yeah. And everyone was just like, oh, aren't you those gay guys? <laughs> Let's play a little of it. Oh, yeah. We can do that. The only show where we talk nothing but exclusively nothing else but tigers. Okay? No other questions, please. All right. We're going to take our first call from Toby in Oklahoma. What's up, Toby? Yeah, my question was, uh, is everybody at the zoo gay, or was it just y'all? Oh, my God. Dang, man. Can you believe this guy? What the hell? What the hell? You must have some corn cob stuff you between your ears. You got corn cob in your ears, man. What, do you got a pumpkin patch in your head? There's a pumpkin there. patch on there? No, we're trying to talk about tigers. It's tiger it's talk. tiger talk, man. No, well, you must have just missed it, but I will reiterate for those at home who may have tuned in just now, okay? We're talking nothing but tigers. Straight and tiger. Tiger talk. Talking tigers, do you see the sign? Okay, next question. Well, yeah, I had a question about bangles. Oh, my lord. <laughs> well, all right. Well, this is a first <laughs> okay. in tiger talk in history. Yeah. We do have we a question. Got a tiger question. About tigers, okay. <laughs> I'm excited. Let's hear it, man. What do you want to know about the bangles? Y'all like bangling these balls against your chin? <laughs> God! <laughs> so that's the gist yes i enjoyed it Kyle. great job <laughs> thank you but that sketch actually got joe to follow me wow and that's how i started talking to him and then you know eventually just randomly at, reached out to him last week and was like hey do you want to come on the podcast and he was like yeah amazing like, all right and i want to remind our listeners that is coming up very soon i was gonna say very very soon because we need to clear up more things and i, I want to let him tell you that but one of the last misconceptions here I can talk about is the plot to kill Carol Baskin. That is why he's in jail. Yes. Let's return to the moment where he's given the zoo over to Jeff Lowe. Yeah, he starts the zoo, gets into a feud with Carol Baskin. That gets real serious. He starts hemorrhaging money, you know, trying to fight her. Then goes to Jeff Lowe is like, you know what? I know you're a wealthy businessman in Las Vegas. Let me give you my biggest asset, which is my zoo. And now that's where we're at. So Carol Baskin then claims that Alan Glover, who is this fucking <laughs> whack job, he looks like he could be my uncle, which is oh like boy. really bugs me. He <laughs> looks like a lot of people I'm related to. <laughs> and he comes out and says that Joe hired him as a hitman for right. $3,000 to travel from Oklahoma down to Tampa and kill Carol Baskin. Joe says this never fucking happened. You'll hear him say in his own words, but I can see how someone as mentally has Alzheimer's. <laughs> Wait, nice so way to say it. You're saying Alan Glover isn't all there? Yes, he doesn't have all his marbles. No, I could see how Joe could be like, oh, "I'll give you three thousand bucks to go kill the bitch right now," but just joking around. Come on, who does that? I don't know. Why would he give him three grand? I don't think he he ever did. He's never shown proof of that. The story went that Alan wanted 10 grand to kill Carol, and Joe's like, all I got is three grand. Mm -hmm. And then he supposedly gave Alan the money to go do it. And then Alan, instead of going to Florida to Carol Baskin's place, hangs out at strip clubs and has no intention of killing her. That's but, what he said. Yeah, but then pockets the money anyway. And then calls saying, you know, I need more money. Right. I'm not going to do it. I see here he once said that the 3000 was a donation so that Glover could leave the zoo. Okay. Yeah, like some kind of severance package. Yeah. Very nice. That's a great severance. <laughs> so what really actually happened is that Alan and Jeff Lowe planned on killing Joe. Alan even says it. He retracts his statement with Joe Exotic's lawyers saying, I lied on the stand. I perjured myself. And I'm the reason that Joe's in jail. The plan was really to kill Joe. Me and Jeff set up a piano wire in a place that they knew he was four-wheeling so that he would get his head cut off. Oof. And they said that the piano wire got cut, but it's still wrapped around the same tree yeah. to this day. In Tiger King 2, Alan travels to Oklahoma and shows Joe's new lawyer exactly where the wire was buried. Exactly. And actually, that's a good time. We have a clip from Tiger King Season 2 where Alan reveals this. Yes. Alan put in an affidavit on video today that 
Dave was gonna kill me because Jeff was on my life insurance. We came up with a plan to cavitate Joe's head to kill him, to clear him away from the property so Jeff could take it over animals and everything. They actually even set a trap to decapitate me. They strung a piece of barbed wire across from tree to tree. They were hoping that I'd be riding the full wheel fast enough to hit that wire. They'll cut your fucking head off. Whether it hits you in your chest or what, it's still gonna get to your neck. This don't make me look good at all. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I like that. This don't make me look good. This don't make me look good at all. To be fair, not many people looked good if they were involved in the Tiger King story. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. A lot of people think that Joe, he was convicted of the murder for hire plot, but it sounds like it was the opposite. He was supposed to be killed, and those guys just fucked with him, and they have financial incentive to do so. Yeah. That's the biggest thing about this story is everyone that is against him is financially motivated well, to that, be against him. That is messed up Yeah, that Jeff Lowe was a beneficiary on his life insurance policy. That, yeah, it's like, man, Joe, what are you doing? Why are you putting him on your life insurance? It's the same thing as marrying Dylan Passage and giving that twin full power yeah oh man i have heard of a scam where if someone knows somebody with more money they say hey you know let me borrow 100 grand i'll put you on my life insurance and when i kick the bucket you can take all the money so that might have been that's a scam a thing here yeah <laughs> so you have to die for that to work or what <laughs> well yeah the, the you're not paying it back you're when you die the person's gonna get the money back well, it's not really a scam, then. That's an arrangement. <laughs> okay, nice. That's an arrangement. I have this arrangement. Because they still pay the piper when they die. Yeah. I'm, I was just trying to rack my brain. Like, why would he possibly put Jeff Lowe on his life insurance? More incentive, maybe? Like, I don't have money now. Like, you just said it yourself. Yeah. That, I don't that's have money the only now, thing I can come up with. Here you go. That possibly happened. Yeah, I'm sure. Because Joe Exotic was so desperate. Yeah. So, yeah, this murder for hire plot went to the court system because they all turned him in. Yeah. Alan and that fucking, that one guy, uh, James Garretson. Mm. He's the guy at the end of Tiger King who's riding a jet, jet ski. ski. Yeah. And on the soundtrack is Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. This series was so absurd. Yeah. It was a real life cartoon. It really was. And so he, I guess he has a jet ski business. Why we needed the vanity shot of him riding it yeah. to the Rocky music. I don't know. Yeah. But that is one of the indelible images from that series, I think, yeah. for some reason. So this guy had worked with Joe Exotic and known him for over 20 years. And he became an FBI informant to help uh, put Joe behind bars. And mm. so he recorded conversations between Joe and Jeff Lowe. Yeah. And they wanted to make it sound like he was doing this murder for hire plot. Right. And then Joe was arrested in 2018. The original charge they had was murder for hire. So the federal agents came in and said, you're arrested for this. And essentially, they just want you to plea out so they can nail you and say that they won. Yeah, he was found guilty on two counts. Yeah. So the original charge is the murder for hire plot. And when the feds get you, when any law enforcement agency gets you, they just want to nail you to the wall and say, you know, you're going to jail. So they want you to plea out and just take the punishment that they want to give you before a trial even starts. Joe ended up saying, I want a full trial, which he has every right to do. And then the feds go, OK, since you want the trial, we're going to charge you with 21 more counts related to his farm. So it was about not having the proper paperwork for euthanizing the five tigers that he had that he put down that was completely legal to do so. Uh, he had a federal license and everything, but it was like just a little bit more paperwork that he needed to do. Uh uh, and he shot them because they were sick. Yes. Not to get back at Jeff Lowe. No. Okay. I no. just wanted to clear that up. Yeah. So they just pelted him with 21 charges related to that. It's like the Trump thing where they said he has like 97 felonies, but it's all just the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just it's redundant. Yeah. So that's what happened to him. He ended up getting 22 years. Like you said, the murder for hire charges were two different ones. And then he appealed saying, you know, that should just be one charge. And they go, OK, we agree with you. We're taking one year off. So instead of 22 years, he's in for 21. And now he has to fight for an actual appeal because there's evidence that has come up since his trial, which is 
in the form of Alan saying, actually, the plan was to kill Joe. And yeah. I, I perjured myself. That's huge. Yeah. That the hitman that was hired to kill Carol Baskin saying that was never the plot. Yeah. That's crazy. So without further ado, I say we hear from the Tiger King himself. And where is he now incarcerated? Uh, he is incarcerated in Florida while he is suing the man who helped create the country songs with him. <laughs> oh, no. Did we mention that he's also a prolific country singer? And he has plans for when he, if and when he gets out that, that you'll hear about in this phone call. Uh, this phone call was between me, Joe, and Ben Kissel, friend of the show. And Alejandro was uh, very sick and could not make it. So there you go. This call is from Joe. This call will be recorded and subject to monitoring at any time. To accept this call, press 5. To block this, you may begin speaking now. Hey, Joe. What's up? Hey, how are you, my friend? Not too bad. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, you're on the phone with me, Kyle Plouffe, and my uh, my buddy Ben Kissel. What's up, Joe? Thanks so much for doing the show. I appreciate you giving me a, a voice and a platform. Of course, of course. Uh, we are talking on a Saturday here. Uh, is there a notif- noticeable difference in federal prison on Saturdays, or is it just like every other? You're allowed to let your hair down on the weekends? You know, norm- norm- normally, it's, it's just the same. Actually, normally on, on the weekends, it's slower because there's nothing to do. But, like, this is a weekend, a holiday weekend because of Labor Day. So uh, they got a concert going on outside. With oh, nice. Popcorn and all kinds of games and stuff. So it will be a pretty festive weekend. But, you know, normally a weekend just sucks. Yeah. Well, that's great. So they're treating you okay in there? I mean, it, you know, it's okay. It's It's prison. Yeah. Right, right. I wanted to ask you, um, you have your share of supporters, obviously. People are going to love you no matter what. But then there's also the other side of the coin where people, you know, might not like you too much. What are the people who don't like you have wrong about you? Because I can list a whole bunch of things, but I want to hear it in your words. Well, you know, first of all, uh, the biggest misconception that, that people have is from the news media, because every news story that comes out, they put that I'm in here for murder for hire and 19 charges of animal abuse. Mm-hmm. I have never been charged, accused, or convicted of animal abuse by any law enforcement agency. I'm I'm in here for paperwork. Right. Okay, the, the, all the animal charges are for paperwork. Uh, and even the five tigers that I put down, I'm not in here for killing them. I'm in here for taking them without a permit. Right. <laughs> you know, which is which is stupid. Uh, because, hell, we euthanized animals for 23 years and didn't need a permit until it was time to put me in prison. Right. Is that what keeps you up at night when people just have this misconception that you are an abuser of animals when, I suppose, in your mind, you really did love those uh, creatures? Well, you know, uh, and, and that's, the, that's the whole thing. You know, people can say, oh, well, you know, you kept them in cages. Okay, look. You can take a, a mountain lion in the wild in California, and if he attacks a hiker in the wild, what's the first thing they do? They hunt him down and kill him, right? Mm. So, so you, you could you could tell me that that my tigers belong in the wild all day long, but the first time that they go into a village and hurt somebody, they're going to kill them. Right. Okay, so they're they're safer in a cage, you know. And then you have Carol Baskin, uh, who thinks it's abusive to take the babies away from their mom. Okay. Why in the hell would you want a, a baby tiger growing up with no contact to be nothing but a man killer in a cage? Mm. But people don't even forethink anything else. You know, I could sit here and accuse everybody that drinks milk of, of being an animal abuser because half the people in, in this country are too stupid to even know that a milk cow has a baby. You take the baby away from the mom the minute it's born so they can milk the mom, okay? And if it's unlucky enough to be a boy baby calf, they kill them because they're worthless. Mm. You know, uh, they only keep the, the the heifer, the baby females, because they grow up to be milk cows where they don't need a, a pasture full of bulls. So they hit them in the head or, or shoot them the minute they're born if they're boys. So... You know, don't be telling me that I'm an animal abuser when you're doing the same damn thing. Right. Uh, you know, it's just everything is so ass backwards. You know, it's it's if well, you have an endangered species, well, what do you do to save it? You breed them. How political 
do you think your conviction was? Obviously, you were running for president. You got a lot of notoriety. And there was some feuds between you and, and your local sheriff. How political do you believe all this was? I, I think it was extremely political. You know, I, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but, you know, uh, Kamala Harris bragged on her Twitter account that she sponsored the, the Big Cat Safety Act, and she was pushing everybody to watch Tiger King because they made Tiger King look so bad. You know, uh, and so it's extremely political, and that's why I don't push for a pardon from Biden or Harris because they're the ones who pushed the, the Big Cat Safety Act for Carol to even do this to me. I right. mean, but, you know, I got to watch Tiger King for the first time last month because we're, we're working on a lawsuit against Netflix. Really? That was and, the first time you watched it was last month? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and I was real, I, I knew I was going to be disappointed when I saw it anyway, but I was even more disappointed when I saw it because if this would have been about conservation of tigers or saving tigers or anything but making Joe look bad, you know, staff that lost her arm uh, at my zoo, instead of a interviewing her in front of a tiger cage or, or somewhere to show the zoo, what did they do? They show, they set her in the middle of a junkyard mm -hmm. to make it look like the zoo was a junkyard. Then they got the so-called hitman in the bathtub interviewing him, and then they got John Finley with no teeth and no shirt on throughout <laughs> the whole show. I mean, come on, man. It didn't even show the zoo. Right. You know why they didn't show the zoo is because I had the most beautiful privately owned zoo in the country. Mm. And, you know, my zoo was 10 times better looking than Carol's. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Alan, I mean, that's one of the most frustrating parts about all this is that, you know, the reason initially you even investigated was because of Alan, who came out and said that you had hired him to kill Carol and you promised him 3000 bucks. And in the show, it shows him what he breaks down in Texas somewhere at a strip club demanding more money. Well, you know, I haven't watched season two yet. Okay. But apparently, you know, apparently in season two, you know, he breaks down and admits that it was all made up. Right. Cause that's and, the thing. And he takes, the, the producers of Netflix and my lawyers to the zoo yeah. and shows where he hit a piano wire and their their whole idea was to kill me to begin with. Yeah, and he has yeah. a, he's with your lawyers having a sworn statement on your uh, on your lawyer's YouTube channel and he sits there and says that he completely made everything up. So why am I still here, guys? It, exactly. I, I completely agree with you. I think that's outrageous and, you know, that's the reason why all that investigation even kicked off. Because they originally just wanted that one charge, and then when you said you wanted the trial, they're like, hey, here's 21 more charges. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I have to give John Phillips a lot of credit, because he went through the trenches to get the evidence that he's got. Mm. And, and you know, during my trial, you know, they, they showed the heads of the five tigers that I put down, okay? And I even had permission in a written protocol from the United States Department of Agriculture to do that. Right. Right? But... Come to find out, during my trial, they said four of them had bullet holes and one of them was, was killed by blunt force trauma. Okay, right. They tried to make the jury think that I beat this tiger to death. Right. I come to find out, John Phillips, there was six tiger heads. Okay, they swapped one of them out for one a tiger mm. head that actually had fractures. Oh, my and, God. Yeah, yeah, you know, and there, there's just the FBI knew that uh, Robert Ingersoll is not where, where I got the $3,000 from, just like they testified, you know? Right. And now we have text messages and videos. You know, the first thing that the government shouldn't have done was trusted a bunch of felons uh, to be their witnesses because they recorded them the whole time. Yeah, right. Yeah. How difficult is it to disprove a negative? Once this narrative is out, um, obviously, again, thanks for coming on uh, Kyle's show, Death and Entertainment, here to express yourself. But how difficult has that been for you to get your version of the truth out? Well, I mean, you know, for the first four years, it was impossible because the TV show made me look guilty. All right. But now that they, you know, I don't know what Carol promised them all, but, you know, after Jeff uh, and everybody got me put in here, you know, then she kicked him off of my zoo. Then he went to Thackerville and built his own zoo, uh, in which he conned some school, old school teacher out of her quarter million dollar savings account to do that. Jeez. 
And then the government, PETA, Carroll, all turned on him and ended up raiding his zoo twice, taking all his animals away, and then he ended up getting evicted off of that property. Yeah. So they wanted some payback, okay? James and Jeff uh, and Alan all wanted payback. So they gave their cell phones and their computers to John Phillips, my attorney, thinking that they deleted everything, but they only deleted everything off the front side of the phones, not the back side of the phones. Mm -hmm. mm. So... John Phillips was able to retrieve over 416 recordings and videos. Wow. Yeah, and that's where we got all the evidence of the federal agents knew they were lying, and this was all a setup and yeah. everything else. But, you know, all I can do is so far the... This call is from a federal prison. The appellate court in Denver, Colorado has granted me all of my motions on this, this appeal so far that I've asked for. Good. They demanded uh, oral arguments where the first attorneys didn't want oral arguments. Uh, and they just granted me a month ago because the first lawyers screwed everything up and then they wouldn't answer the court. So I got John Pierce and Roger Roots who represented Kyle Rettenhouse and Ruby Giuliani. Oh, I've wow. Got some really good lawyers now. And I filed a pro se motion with the appellate court asking for 45 more days to hire these lawyers and get them up to speed and let them amend the briefs and everything. And, and the court approved them, you know. So we got some good hopes that we finally get this new evidence in front of three honest judges instead of one corrupt judge in Oklahoma City that just doesn't want to let this conviction go. So, you know, I'm, I've got a lot of faith that maybe I'll be home by November, December, January. Yeah. What can normal people do who are just everyday, you know, Joe, Joe fans and supporters? What can they do to uh, help you out? You know, just get on JoeExoticOfficial.com and share the evidence link. Start educating the, the people of the country that the evidence is really there that I'm really innocent. Yeah. You know, I, my parents have died during this. I lost my marriage. I lost my zoo. I lost I lost everything. Right. And I didn't make a dime off of Tiger King, you know, right. because right. so many people think that I filmed for Tiger King, and I didn't. My, my husband at the time, Dylan, sold Netflix my computers, and they got all of that footage off oh, of my wow. computer. Yeah. So I'm broke as fuck, uh, and i got to pay lawyers. So, you know, get on the website, help me yeah. out. Sure. Main, main thing is be my voice, you know? Yeah. I know uh, I saw you say you have some plans to uh, tour if and when you get out with the, you know, the country music gig. I wanted to ask, I know that I saw that you said you wanted to collaborate with Cardi B and Morgan Wallen. I do. Have you, uh, trio. Have you seen this, the first openly gay country act, Dixon Dallas? Ah. Uh. Oh, man. He has a hilarious, it's very graphic, the stuff that he, he sings about, but I think it'd be it a is. hilarious mashup with you guys. <laughs> you know, the, the only concert I ever went to was the ICP concert. Oh my and God. They, oh. Uh, uh, and they put on a hell of a production. Did you get soaked okay, in Fago? Yeah. You know, they do a skit for almost every song. Yeah, they so, do. <laughs> and, and William Morris Agency has offered me a tour and, and they wanted me to tour a little bit with Morgan Wallace. And uh, I want to open my show with Here Kitty Kitty with a lookalike of Carol Baskin riding a tricycle around. <laughs> I think that sounds fantastic. <laughs> well, we'll be there, hopefully. I will definitely be there. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's like war. Yeah. Joe, <laughs> lastly for me, is there anything that when you were watching this documentary that you were like, God dang it, you know, like any regrets, any, what would be the one thing that you would change? I mean, to me, it seems like you just surrounded, you were surrounded by people that didn't have your best interest. Well, you know, we built that place to give animals a second chance and give people a second chance. And to this day, even though I'm in prison and I've lost seven years of my life and everything else, I can comfortably say the majority of the people that we let come into that zoo and work cleaned themselves up and went on and, and became profession, uh, professional people in, in other jobs. Hmm. Unfortunately, the group that put me here didn't give a shit about life or anything else. And uh, they turned against me in order to kiss Jeff's ass and stay working at the zoo because they thought that he was going to just fill them full of money and mm. let them party their ass off. But this phone uh, just beeps saying it's going to hang up in about 30 seconds. Okay, but, uh, okay. The only thing that I would change is I would never let Jeff in my world ever again. Yeah. You know? Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, thank you, Joe. I really appreciate your time. Oh, that's it. All right. There it was. Wow. Joe Exotic. Heck of a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> 
Great job. Thank you. I did try to help with some of the questions. Yeah. Like the Dixon Dallas. Yes. <laughs> Which he didn't even know who Dixon Dallas was. I think he's going to enjoy it when he finally hears it. Yeah. He's bouncing on my booty cheeks. He like, takes me for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> and if you all haven't heard this yet, yeah. you got to hear it. And we got to see Joe when he goes on tour. Yes. He says he's going to open with Here Kitty Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> That's his epic anthem. Here Kitty Kitty with a uh, Carol Baskin lookalike riding a tricycle. Yeah. And I will be in the front row for that, the first show. And in the music video, the lookalike is feeding the husband's meat to the tigers. Yeah. It's so great. It is very in your face. And then in the interview, I also thought it was interesting that Joe finally watched Tiger King recently. Yeah, I don't think he said that on any other no. interviews. Exclusive. Because I watched a whole bunch of them before and listened to a whole bunch before. So we weren't like kind of rehashing what everybody else did. Yeah. And I hadn't heard him say that he, he had seen it yet. Because he's doing the music lawsuit. Yeah. He wants to be paid for his music that was used in this popular series. Right. And I believe that the first round, the judge threw the case out, but yeah. maybe it'll return. I think it's going to return because that's why he was shipped to Florida so that he could go back and forth to court. Right. And that's also why he watched it finally. Yeah. And he hasn't seen season two yet, but we will check back in with him <laughs> when he does. Yeah. So we need our final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, Tiger King, everyone has probably seen it, but yeah. you forget all the little intricacies of this story. There's so much that we haven't even talked about. Oh, my God. We'll be here yeah. forever. We'll return to it yeah. another time. But um, I just wanted to mention a couple of the other deaths mm. because we have Carol Baskin's husband. Yep who she fed to her pet tigers. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Joe's husbands. So there's the first one yeah, died from a disease. Mm -hmm. But then we have Travis Maldonado. This is one of the most compelling moments in the Tiger King documentary. Yeah. He is sitting around with Joe. We didn't mention that Joe was also running for governor. Right. And his campaign. And president this year. He, right. And his campaign manager, this guy basically picked up off the street, mm -hmm. was sitting around with Travis Maldonado, the younger husband of Joe Exotic. And Travis has a gun with a bullet in it, but the chamber is empty. Mm -hmm. So he's playing around, puts the gun to his head, pulls the trigger, yep. and he's instantly killed. Yeah. Much like John Eric Hexum mm -hmm. on the set of Cover Up. So that was a very uh, tragic situation. Yeah. And then there's Eric Cowie, one of the zookeepers, big character from the series. He died of alcoholism in 2021. Yeah. And then a guy named Jeff Johnson, who was a reptile dealer, brief appearance in the doc. Mm. He shot himself. Yeah. So yeah, it's this is it's kind of like a curse. Marred in tragedy. Um, yeah, so I guess my final thought is, you know, you need to just not put nefarious people on your life insurance. No. I think that's the thing. I think he didn't have any actual real true friends and the people he surrounded himself with ultimately were incentivized to contribute to his downfall. So make sure the people who are around you actually care about you. Yes, it's a wonder that this operation went on as long as it did. What was it, 2003 to 2019? 99. Yeah, 99 even. Wow. Yeah. All the people he had around and the antics they would do. I mean, they were shooting guns and riding dirt bikes. Oh, yeah. It was just constant mayhem. Plus, you have big cats and exotic animals. And the drugs and the sex. And that was just Joe Exotic's honeymoon. Yellow. Um, but yeah, really fascinating tale. Yeah. T-A-I-L. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, my final thought is I really don't think that Joe Exotic had that real intent to kill Carol Baskin. Right. Would he have been sad if she suddenly dropped dead of a Hell heart attack? No. Absolutely not. I don't think anybody would. But it's just there's too much evidence that Jeff Lowe and Alan Glover were lying. Yeah. And so as he said himself in our exclusive interview, why is he still there? I don't know. 
And we need to investigate Carol Baskin further. Everybody needs to investigate Carol Baskin. I mean, don't go out and be a psycho and show up to her house. But no, but I, if you want to nickname her Carol Durst, yeah, then go right ahead. Yes. Because she knows a lot more than she's saying, at the very least. Yeah. But yeah, great job, Kyle. I'm so glad that you made that happen with Joe Exotic. Thank you. And if anybody wants to see all of the exculpatory evidence, there's like 750 videos <laughs> at joeexoticofficial.com slash pages slash innocent. You can just go to his website, joeexotic.com, and the pull-down tab will show you the um, evidence bar, and then you just click that and go see for yourself. 700 and some odd... <laughs> Fuck. You know, videos that prove that he's innocent. Wow. Yeah. And it's still shorter than The Irishman. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Had to piss a lot during that movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so thank you, everybody, for listening. I guess before we get out of here, I think I hear something. You've got mail. Oh, we have some mail here. A lot of good reviews. A couple bad ones. But we will share them all right here. Uh, HITM Podcast on Apple Podcast said, New favorite. Just found out about the show about a month ago. Quickly became my favorite podcast. Five stars. Ah, uh, Thank you. Another one. August 8th. Great show. Corey Bull said, Love the podcast. Found you a few weeks ago. And I've been listening to four shows a night. Wow. That is man crazy. Uh, he lives in the UP, the Upper Peninsula. Hey, I uh, have family in the UP. Hey, look at you guys. This is just your brother. The Upers. Yes. Uh, in Michigan and work overnight at the Home Depot, so your episodes get me through. Great combo of humor, information, and emotion. Yes, we do cry here. That's true. I also... We get sick and we cry. <laughs> We're human. Yes. He says he's also been to Fond du Lac, but we call it Fondle a Yak. Oh, that's a new one for me even. Sorry, not sorry, LOL. Keep it up. <laughs> Well, it's better than Fondle Sack. Yes. Uh, slap you like Penny from Good Time, said Alejandro. Hope you feel better soon. And that was a month ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it's still relevant now, so thank you. Yes. Uh, there's a great one from M Jewel 1010 One star. Makes my ears bleed. Man, you are loaded with a lot of great info, but I can't handle the humor. What a waste. Well, you probably didn't listen to the first 30 goddamn seconds of the podcast where we say this is a true crime comedy podcast and we really put our personalities out in the first minute i would say i think so so if that ain't your bag get on then out. get the fuck out of here the fuck out of here but we do welcome all forms of feedback of so course thank you yeah some of your critics are usually uh the most right about you but i don't know about that because we do tell people there's gonna be some giggles <laughs> yeah i mean that one wasn't right no <laughs> <laughs> but comedy is subjective it is well, Kyle, I've been looking forward to this moment for over a month. Yes. It's good to be back. I wish that I was sounding like my normal self, Yeah, but I hope I wasn't too distracting. No, not at all. We will, uh, we will get through this sickness. We're kicking the last bastion of it out of our bodies. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with uh, hopefully better sounding voices here. So until next time. Don't go dying on us. You have just heard... A true Hollywood... Shocker. I have never seen anything like this before. The movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures... Nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon.